Kenny Anderson, the managing director of Anderson Construction, and Alan Massey, managing director of Carlton Rock Limited. Uh, very good afternoon to you, gentlemen. I know you take different views. If we can start with you first, uh, Kenny Anderson. I mean, it is going to take lots of investment to get the remaining supplies of oil and gas out from under the sea. Doesn't it take the UK Treasury's deep pockets to invest in that? Well, I don't think the UK Treasury invest in the oil industry. I think it's private money. Um, what the Treasury, or whether it was a Scottish Treasury or a UK Treasury's role, is to get the tax regime correct. And um, with 16 fiscal changes by the UK Treasury over the last few years affecting the oil and gas industry, that created a huge downturn in investment in 2011 that we're still feeling the effects of. Sir Ian Wood's report today goes into finite detail for whichever government is in charge on how to best use the remaining resources. I mean, by value, there's much more than half of discovered resources still to come out, and that doesn't count undiscovered resources. So I think the Treasury's role, whether it's a Scottish Treasury or a UK Treasury, is to maximise the possibilities for privacy, private investment. Yeah. We well, were told from okay. the referendum... Well, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I just want to bring in Alan Massey here. We haven't got a, an unlimited amount of time. I mean, Thank Alan, you. respond to that then, that, you know, it doesn't take uh, a big country. It's not about that. It's about consistency of the, the tax regime. Getting that right. Well, I think that you've, you've always to look at the big picture here. It's not just about oil. It's about the state of the country, and I mean the UK and in Scotland in particular. Aberdeen has benefited unbelievably well under oil, and I think uh, the revenues from oil is something that the operators and producers are still making a lot, a lot of money. It's only right that the government tax fairly, and I believe the investment in oil and gas, you know, you see it in Aberdeen. Aberdeen's done very well. Scotland's done very well under oil. And how, how long is oil going to be left? You know, Alex Salmon can't even tell us about the currency, let alone oil. You know, are we going to be trading in pounds, the euros? He linked our economy to Iceland, but he's now, we don't mention Iceland. So we're better together. Alistair Darlins has outlined a very comprehensive uh, campaign. He's put down the gauntlet to the First Minister to meet him in Edinburgh, in Aberdeen. He's a Scottish MP. Alex Salmon has too many loose ends. It's all ifs, buts and maybes. And we need more from the First Minister. Yeah, well, What's okay. his plan B? Yeah, okay. I mean, What's just his plan B if we don't have the pound? Just to bring back Kenny Anderson, okay, you've moved it on to the pound. And uh, maybe, Kenny, you would accept that uh, they rather shot uh, Alex Salmon's fox there on that one about joining the pound. But do you think he's on stronger territory when it comes to Scotland's oil? Um, well, it's not all about Alex Salmon. It's about what's best for Scotland. And we need a consistent tax regime. And that's what's failed. We also need long-term investment. We can see the horrendous traffic congestion problems in Aberdeen because there's been no long-term investment. It's always been politically expedient to say that it, it was going to run out. When I was at, it's, at school in the northeast of Scotland um, in the 1970s, when oil was first coming on stream, we were told it was only going to last a few years. We've been consistently lied to. The Macron report was buried in the 1970s in government because it showed the true wealth and your own introduction to this piece actually displays exactly what it's worth. But this, the underlying Scottish economy is very strong. Oil is a bonus. Um, our GDP is approximately the same in Scotland as it is for the UK as a whole. The oil is a pure bonus. Yeah. And, 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 and all the figures that we're quoting are on discovered resources. We're not counting the west of Shetland and the Clyde Basin, ah. where there's... Se sorry. Well, it's just mentioning Shetland. Uh, doesn't Shetland have a case for saying, well, OK, we'll have that and we don't have to stay within Scotland? Well, sh well Tavis, Scot sorry, Tavis Scott put that into the domain, uh, the former Liberal leader, and uh, he was shot down by a poll in, in Shetland and Orkney that just there was no desire for uh, independence for Shetland and Orkney or a desire to stay with the UK. They would stay with, with well, Edinburgh. But we're nearer Norway than we are Edinburgh, so where does that go? Should Shetland people be part of Norwegian waters, you know? Because we're, we're closer to, to, to Norway and Scandinavia than we are to Edinburgh. So where does all this stop? You know, the truth of the matter is oil pays a lot of bills for Scotland. We've got an aging population. Salmon couldn't answer the questions about pensions. It's not just about oil. Oil pays the bills for the UK and for Scotland in particular. Scotland does very well and, you know, I'm proud to be Scottish. 
I'm proud to be Aberdonian, but you know, the First Minister must give us more answers to the pound and to all the big questions that he's simply not doing. Okay, well, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your time. Alan Massey there and Kenny Anderson. Very good to talk to you. No doubt we shall talk again. Thank you. Thanks very much.